evening. This is the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach SIG meeting. Today is May 30th. So I have three items on the agenda, GSOC, Contributor Spotlight, and our uh, project on strengthening, strengthening the community efforts. Um, anything else I should add? Nope. Okay. Okay, so for GSOC, um, coding period has begun. Uh, our contributors are progressing along nicely. I have added our uh, office hours, um, meeting notes here. I'm working with the uh, contributors for a blog post to take note of their key takeaways for the bonding period. And I'm hoping to get that published tomorrow or Monday. Thank you, Chris, for that idea. For the next milestone, so uh, July 18th is midterm evaluation deadline. And then we have um, scheduled for July 11th to do our midterm presentations by the GSOC contributors. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that um, you'd like to add that I may have missed here? Which is a very oh. high level. I'm thinking like for Orkimans, for the for, for this, like should we do something to check in like between now and the midterm evaluations? Uh between us four uh us four at org admins, Chris? Yeah, yeah, just regular check-ins with the lead mentors. Okay. Yeah, we should do that. Cause like we used to do that by I think we used to yeah. by now or something like that, but I don't remember. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. We do um to do that. So um, should we do that weekly, bi-weekly? Maybe just once in between, in between oh, uh, just once. now and the midterm evaluations. Okay. Good proposal, yeah. yeah not too okay, often. so perhaps we'll take up one of um, a time slot after per, or before the GSOC, no, sorry, before the advocacy and outreach meeting or even after um, this meeting to time to wise meeting and maybe afterwards after after the gsoc meetings so just to check in for the mentors in a, in a group meeting okay sometimes. so that that might be easier to do yeah. okay just a couple of minutes away from your be breakfast <laughs> but i'm I, I think it's a good idea especially uh as after the gsoc uh meeting so the office hour uh everything's fresh mm -hmm. And so we can have uh, a more detailed uh, discussion with uh, the mentors. Okay. It's just to to hear early enough that um, things are not going as as expected. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. So we don't want what happened last year to have repeat again. Yes. Yeah. yeah with, um, with we want some new kind of troubles, uh, not uh, troubles we already experienced, you know, yep. <laughs> yep, yep. novelty. Yep. Okay, good. I will schedule that uh, for us. Okay, and then so the next item is the contributor spotlight stories. Um, we have, Chris, we have Rajiv's story uh, submitted to us already. Um, currently, we have five stories in the queue for Kevin to review. Um, and then I think so for June, Kevin and I, we discussed since we have um, Vandit and Harshes and Rajiv, we figured that perhaps that month we'll do kind of like a GSOC contributor um, con okay. spotlight. Mm -hmm. So we will do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I think we want to spend a little bit more time on this effort here. So strengthening the community effort. So thank you, John Mark and Bruno, for um, creating the data here for us. So, John Mark, I would you like to like 
talk us through this a little bit? I don't want to say the wrong things here. Um, well, uh, uh, well, well, basically, we're generating every day uh, a, f a file and pushing it and committing it to GitHub in this particular repository. Um, and this is a CSV file containing uh, several informations about a randomly selected uh, contributor uh, that's created a PR in the previous month. So um, we have, for instance, uh, the day the query ran. Month is the month where we picked uh, a random contributor. GitHub handle, handle is the GitHub name of the user. I try to retrieve the name and a company of the user if it's filled in in GitHub. Uh, I provide the GitHub handle URL, so the detail URL and the avatar. A uh, number of PR is um, the number of PRs that have been created in the targeted month. And repositories uh, is a list of repositories where uh, PRs were created in. If several PRs were created in the same repository, it shows only one, and it's space delimited. So the full specification, uh, well, which is a grandiose word, uh, is available on the, the repo. So uh, Bruno worked on the automation for that. So it runs already a couple of days. Uh, now, uh, as we've been discussing earlier, uh, now Chris needs to do the necessary magic and voodoo yep. to pick up that data and present it in a sexy way on the contributor page. Okay, sure. to... right. Say that again, Chris? At the bottom, right? Kind of like yes. Kind of like... Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Thank you, Alisa. Okay. So what's the wording want to use for this one? That's exactly what we wanted to talk about. Yep. <laughs> right, lead in. So in looking at Optiums, they so they have thank you, and then they have the user for making nine contributions. Do we want to get that specific or we have the data, but do we want to data is there display it? Yeah. I I don't mind. So I, I would uh, say yes. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Chris, you're inside. <laughs> Yeah, we should we should display all information like the handle or the full name and handle, and then the number of contributions and also maybe um, to which repositories and uh -huh. uh, and that's it. Maybe not the company name. The we company name this. I wouldn't I wouldn't put the the, right. the company name yeah because oh, it's yeah. it was just by curiosity that I added it, okay. uh, and it's not formatted it in. Uh, yeah, or we could even keep it for another page or maybe a Jenkins.io or something. You know, we have a page about sponsors. Somehow companies letting uh, their employees working for Jenkins. Um, maybe it's in their free time, but whatever. Maybe we should uh, thank them for that. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a terrible idea. I don't know. Maybe some people are working with their GitHub handle linked to their company, but they don't want the company to know. <laughs> Whatever. But you could yeah. thank them on another place <laughs> if ever okay. uh, everyone was okay with that. So yes, I agree. Let's not put the company name in that thank you portion. And maybe also repositories. I'd I'd add the repositories, but um, yeah, we should put I don't have... Go ahead. We should put links to repositories with the repository names. Yep. Yeah. But I don't have the URLs, but the URLs can be built. Yeah. So yeah. I just put uh, org 
in repo name. It's enough to put uh, github.com in front of them and get the, yeah, yeah I guess so. And it's space delimited, so. Uh, mm -hmm. So what I have here, is this correct? Yep. Okay. And um, maybe oh. also the, the avatar. Yeah, that's right. Like they do on uh, Timurin. Mm. Okay. Yeah, on the example, yes, it's um, not looking good, but I think that's a GitHub avatar. <laughs> but yeah, do we have is... a, uh, oh, to, I add the, the like the link to the user with the avatar or not really? It doesn't huh. matter. I could. I don't know. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So I I didn't catch that. Yeah. I think Chris wanted to make the image clickable and uh, yep. link to the um, GitHub uh, page for the contributor. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that makes sense. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, is idea. this workable for you, Chris, to retrieve that CSV file from uh, I think uh, so, the yeah. GitHub? Yeah. yeah okay. Try something like similar with um with 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 the GSOC project. So it should be doable, more than doable. Okay, for me it sounds like Everest, the Mount yeah, Everest to climb for me. So oh, really? uh, I quit front end development years ago when we had some cores error. I don't know if that still exists. You know, when oh. you weren't allowed to make some cross site uh, request uh, from the JavaScript. So. Yeah, good luck with that. I, I know you can do that too, but I can't and I won't. Okay. Yeah, and I think if we run into roadblocks, Chris, um, I mean, I think the if we can just have like the basics, um, that right. would be that would that would be more than sufficient. You know? sufficient. Uh, let me come up with something. Let me try something this weekend. I'll get back to you guys after. Maybe so next cool. time we meet. Okay. Well, enjoy your weekend. Don't work on your weekend. <laughs> yeah. Two weekends. Two weekends. So, um, and you guys should see something before uh, doing the next meeting. So I can mm. do that. Okay. Okay. But I think what you meant, Alisa, if, if we just had for the first iteration, just thank you and the avatar, uh, you know, the GitHub handle, that would be enough to start with. Uh, mm. So, yeah. But, but, yeah, but maybe the most difficult part is just getting the CSV, parsing it, so it wouldn't make a big change to add the other fields. I don't know. I know nothing about front-end development. No, it's, no it's, it should be easy. Have to hear that, and I am envious. <laughs> so, uh, so the basic would be name, handle, avatar, would you say number of contributions? Or that could be like a, um, a nice to have. We need to say that um, the month period. Here, let, let's let's make a prototype and say, uh, because the, the Tamarind uh, page, it's through the complete history of the project. Yeah. Sometimes they're they're referencing um, PRs that are ten years old. Okay. But let Chris uh, make a prototype, mm -hmm. and and let's work uh, uh, on that. And and he can has have his creativity work. Okay. Uh, on that and know what he can what he can do and not. Data is there. Okay. Good enough, Chris. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, I think it's excellent. There is only one caveat. Yep. Uh, Bruno was able to find a bug in a query. Uh, so there is one case where it does not work. But I think he handles that case elegantly. <laughs> um, the 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 case is when um, the pull request that has been created 
uh, has been closed and not merged uh, yeah. and not merged and somehow the github query that i'm using does not give the as i use a different kind of uh, a query um it uh, it does not give the the, the right result it does not work I think it makes so sense I'm... for for Gap to do it that way because like unless it's merge, otherwise it's not a contribution. Yeah, but it yeah. appeared in the initial query, so I'm still studying. Why do I have the full result set um, in in the first query, and when I do a query a little bit differently, the second time I don't have the same results. Hmm. Um, and and I'm still investigating it. Um, what might be the reason, and I've seen some uh, um, issues about that, is that if the the branch that was associated with the PR has been deleted, uh, then it does not return for um, query efficiency on GitHub side. So uh, there are four or five issues open. So there's one case on 180 um, PRs created yeah. last last month. So there's only one. We won't get that many of them because these kind of things happen when we have, for example, some spam. You know, people just opening a PR for the sake of it to have their name, changing uh, a comma, a space, or putting their name in places they don't belong to. And so we have to close the, the PR, but most of the time we have some useful PRs. So yes, one on 180 per month or so. That should be okay. 180 users, yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, no, no, a lot no. more PR than that. No, no, yeah, statistics, we have to be precise, uh, my bad. <laughs> okay, so we made a nice progress there. Yeah. And the okay. next statistics I'm going to work on is um, uh, having figures showing. So currently we have the assumption that um, we have about 35 contributors that the top contributors contribute to more than 80% of the global number of PRs uh, created. Uh, and I want to have a, a query that verifies this assumption regularly. Mm. Well, that's interesting. Yes. And, and Jean-Marc, you also did something regarding the top contributors and the, um, um, their evolution. The graphs. Yeah. yeah. And I find yeah. that I, I don't know if it's ready yet, but that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's ready. It's ready. It's running. I'll do the full end-to-end -end testing uh, beginning beginning June, uh, but the data is, is there. So it is a query that presents the history of a top contributor uh, so uh, that we can visualize the evolution of, of his, contrib uh, his contributions. So we can spot uh, rising top contributors or top contributors that are slowly uh, fading and, and so that we know because top contributors are critical for the survival uh, of, the of the project. And I don't want to spoil, but I think I've seen two or three new contributors uh, last month in your statistics. Yeah. It's a very strong one, and we need to encourage them. And we need to. Yeah. So this, this, this tooling is available. To so in addition to what Chris is going to be doing for us, you know, this thank you notes, mm -hmm. what other ways can we show them that we appreciate them? And is that outside of like sending them swag? So what I have learned from the past is that, oh, I have too many Jenkins uh, hoodies or t-shirts. But socks. never enough socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, so is should we continue with swag or oh we should you think so it's a good thing to have yeah okay. 
and we could offer I... free hugs. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> air hugs, air hugs. <laughs> air hug. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um... I think that, so. I'm I'm thinking loud there. So we have two axes to thank, reward, encourage. Mm -hmm. So one is giving swag. The other one is giving um, reconnaissance, giving uh, recognition publicly. And we have two strategies for, for that. Okay, yeah. I'm looking, um, I'm running out of ideas for, for yeah. that. But, uh, okay. Um, you're, you're not the only one, in fact. Um, in the GitHub um, maintainer community, there are lots of discussion about how to say thank you to our dearest contributors. And there are also, uh, for lots of open source projects, most of the maintainers are out of new ideas. Uh, you know, when you have given swag, when you have written a thank you on various pages, um, when in the release you put also some thank you and you onboard new contributors and so on, what's left? Mm. I think nobody has the answer. Mm. We need to listen and discuss. And, and and see what other people come up with uh, with ideas. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you uh, think of anything, just let me know. Yep. Um. I was thinking. I I don't know. Could we? Some people has told me like a handwritten note to them means quite personalized. Right. So yeah. um, that's true. That's true. Right. So I'm wondering, Chris, uh, would be would it be worthwhile for like this part to be something in that aspect? Oh, to to mock a handwritten on a page. Oh, OK. I, uh, yeah, depends on the font that we use. So if you, I, can, oh, you like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, like for Google fonts, like pick some fonts that's like kind of like kind of right there. Yeah. And I'll use that. I, I can do that. Now, what were you going to say, Jean Marc? Yeah, what could work, and I know that it had some uh, impact, mm -hmm. uh, was it requires an additional step is that um, we, we write a letter and stick a couple of stickers in it. Mm. But to have a handwritten note, not a computer generated one. Yeah, yeah. The thing you is, know, like a Mark... postcard or something like that. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you think that we your statistics we could um know the um, how could you say that? You know, the the cloud or something, the people that revolute uh, around the contributor we want to thank. You know, for example, in Twitter, they have some extension that say the your Twitter family or something, the people you interact the most with. So could we detect something like that in the PRs, for example? If we want to thank contributor, we could look in the PR. Who uh, reviewed the PR? Who uh, made some commits to change them? Who has to change something in the PR until it gets merged? So that we could ask those people interacting with the contributor we want to thank, Please, could you help us write a letter? Because you may be the one that knows the most, the contributor we want to thank. Yeah, there are two things there. So uh, the idea is there, there's gold in it, but um, it's it's super hard to automate that. Uh, I'm yeah. not good in artificial intelligence and these kind of things, so I know that magic can happen. But uh, these are the kind of things where you need a human brain. Uh, to do. Uh, the second thing is uh, it will require to reach out to yeah. uh, the uh, the contributor uh, to have his uh, a mail, traditional mail address, mm -hmm. which, which he's not maybe always uh, ready. So the case I'm thinking, the chap was surprised honored and gave me freely his email address 
uh, he is so so not email but snail the mail. real mm. the yeah. real uh, yeah Rick and traditional Walter. one yeah. yeah i think it's an idea we should work with and in, in in explore what can be done but um it, and it's especially for the middle one the one that contributed two three uh PRs and try to motivate them to get more involved. Um, yeah, it, and the people it, about it, to churn. So, <laughs> and the people about love to you, churn. please stay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The handwritten note is like a postcard. Mm -hmm. Um, so I share the link in the chat, which would they they contain yeah. some further links to some kind of typefaces we can use. That's too much high in handwriting. Say that again, Chris. I couldn't hear you. Oh, yeah, I was a uh, link in the chat. Link. Yeah, link. Oh, okay. There's a link with some um, handwritten writing. font. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh. Like they have different ones, so um, they have ones up top, uh, like um, so inviting. So uh, um, maybe uh, some like they they have some links above the image. Mm -hmm. Or calligraphy. Yeah, like like this, for example. But uh, these, like, you have, if you want want to see the typefaces, you can check out like um, yeah, that one typeface, but um. It's just no, not that one, maybe. So if you go back, a little bit too go back. Yeah, okay. it's just that. So back button, back button. Oh, you're showing. Uh, uh, no, where, where are you? Back twice. Help, 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 help. There you are. Yeah, one more time. One more time. So if you scroll down below the image, mm -hmm. this is just you like two type fonts, type faces. Two is like these two. Also, a script one, too. So this is mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. So will these work, do you think? Or do we do you want something more like calligraphy? The the ah. one when you click on cal uh, calligraphy is is too ornate. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Or maybe we should ask our doctor to write down something that we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doc is inviting notorious. <laughs> that becomes not readable. Mm. <laughs> I'm okay with this. I mean, yeah. yeah um, okay. It will make a difference from the rest of the text. Yeah. Of yeah. We'll page, it. So. Yeah. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. If if it's not too much work for you, uh, yeah. Chris, and doesn't get you. Fine. Off the main track. Yeah, agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could do something like what they have in the image too, but um, that might take like some time to figure out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Don't spend too much time on it, Chris. Yeah, we just use the, the like the type fonts. We just try. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let me figure out something. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? We're no. good? Okay. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk again next time. Yes. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.